Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go over how to control your Allen Bradley PowerFlex 525 drive using the Compact Logix or Control Logix PLC over Ethernet. For this video, we will be using our Compact Logix trainer. And before we even start, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. So some background about this setup. Our PLC is configured for 192, 168, 1, 152. Now, if you're using our trainer by default, it's going to be 192.168.1.10. But I'm getting ready to do some videos where we're going to network multiple trainers together. And I just didn't want to switch the IP address back. So whenever I say 151, or you see 151 in my program, just know, okay, on my trainer, that's 10. And then our PowerFlex drive, same thing. Your trainer is configured for 192.168.1.12. In my case, it's going to be 192.168.1.152. Let's start in Studio 5000 with a new program. And we're going to be using the 1769-L16ERBB1B. And in the folder structure, that is under Compact Logix 5370 controllers. And we're just going to call this our PowerFlex 525 over Ethernet. Now, expansion module needs to be at zero if you have no modules here, which that would be what you snap to the right side of it. It has nothing to do with networked I.O. And we'll click Finish. And then on our left side here, you're going to see I.O. configuration. And depending on where exactly this is drugged to, you may need to drag it down or you may just have to scroll a little bit. But in our I.O. configuration, we have our point I.O., which has to do with really our physical I.O. that's connected to the PLC. But down here, we also have Ethernet. And we're going to right-click Ethernet and click New Module. And then there is a slew of modules. So up here where it says enter search text for module type, we're going to type PowerFlex. Now they got us down, but you see already we're still, uh, let me just drag this column out here. We're in the PowerFlex 700s and stuff. We, we have a PowerFlex 525, so space 525. Okay, that narrows us down to four, which is quite handy. And if we drag this out a little more, mainly our PowerFlex, if I pull the cover off here, you're going to see has the embedded Ethernet. And that's what we're going to select is the PowerFlex 525 via embedded Ethernet. So we'll create it. And then in the bottom right corner, drag this out where we can see a little bit more of what's going on here. Mainly, now we can see our Ethernet address. And that's where we're going to put the IP address of the PowerFlex drive, not of the PLC. And we want the IP address for this. And it's going to be 192.168.1. And again, yours, if you're using our trainer, is going to be 12. Mine is going to be 152. And we're going to select OK. Oh. Oops, except for I forgot, every module has to have a name. And that, that's something we need to talk about is, I, I probably will name this one Drive. But if you're on a system, do not name yours Drive. Like if, we, I guess, we, I don't know if we've hit this even, but like your controller name should not be PLC. It should be that it is the, I don't know, conveyor number 102. So this, if this is drive number 226, then it should be labeled somehow to connect what we're seeing in the PLC program with where this physical drive is. Now, in this case, it is the only drive. I can't just put drive though. It's just not, it's just not in my nature. So I'm at least going to put trainer drive. That way, at least I didn't just call it drive. So we click OK. And let's just start off with this and see what we can do. So close out this dialog, and then let's download that program. Now, if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers, just look down in the description. We have a whole series to help you with that. Okay, and right off the bat, you're going to think, well, this isn't very exciting because, I don't know, I hit my buttons and nothing happens. But we can learn a little bit before we even start. Is first, 
let's unplug the cable on our drive and pay attention to this IO light because if you've done everything right, your IO light here is solid green. Also, in Studio 5000, your IOK here is solid green. Now I'm going to unplug the cable from the drive and immediately my IO light is now flashing. Also in Studio 5000, my IO not responding is now flashing. If you have done this part and we'll, one, we'll plug our cable back in, but if you have gotten to this point of it and your IO light is still flashing, actually let's pause for a second. Okay, now my IO light solid. So it does take it a couple of seconds, but if you have downloaded your program with just that in it and your IO light is flashing, then you have a problem. And chances are it is in your IP configuration on your PowerFlex drive, what you entered for it to communicate with. So go figure out exactly what that is. And if you have trouble with that, put it down in the comments because I've kind of debated whether we need a video on troubleshooting something like that. And I don't know. So yeah, if you're sitting there staring at a flashing IO light and you're sure you did exactly what I did in the video, then put it down in the comments and maybe I'll do a video on it. Also, one other thing I did there and I didn't actually tell you what I was doing. Let me unplug mine again. You have a flashing fault light here because it knows that it had an ethernet connection and something happened to it. And it says right there, F073 EN net loss. And that means, yeah, it's lost its ethernet connection. What I did is once I had it fixed, I pressed the red button and that clears that fault out. Okay, but as exciting as that is, you didn't come to this video just to see how to make a green light flash. So let's talk about how we can actually do some control with it. And we're gonna to have to change a couple of parameters in it. And we can do it right here at the keypad. And honestly, I probably normally do it at the keypad here, but we can also do it in the software. And let's just go in there and see if we can find it. So here in the left side is that PowerFlex that we just created. Let's double click on it. And you see it's actually connecting to it right now. And it's also downloading the parameters. So let's give it a second and let that blue bar go on across. Again, it's gonna give us some warnings here. There are differences in the offline and physical device that must be resolved to connect project and physical device. Identify which source to use. Okay, we just created this. And honestly, this is set up for whatever I had it set up in the last video. So I wanna, I wanna use what's in here. So we're gonna use physical and click the continue button. And now let's click on parameters. We can view all of our parameters. We can, we can view some really neat ones too, like without even going any further, since we're here, I can hit the green button. We can actually see our current, our voltage. Turn that up there. Now we can see our Hertz going up. So you can get a lot of good information off this page right here about the parameters. Also in future videos, we'll talk about how you can back them up and various other things. But right now we need to change two parameters to make this work. And they're gonna be P46 and P47. So let's just scroll down and find them. Okay, and there is P46, which is our start source. And you notice I was able to click right here and start this drive up. Well, we don't wanna do that. We wanna control it over ethernet. So we're going to click right here and it's going to give us options and we want Ethernet IP. And the very next one is the speed reference and it is on DrivePot, which is this potentiometer right here that you saw me turn to speed it up. We're going to select Ethernet IP. So what that's going to do is it's going to make it where our control or what starts and stops our drive and our speed are both gonna be controlled by whatever has control over it over ethernet, which we just configured to be this compact logics. So let's go ahead and click the okay button. Now we have it where our compact logics should be able to control when it's on and off and its speed. The next thing we gotta know is where is all this? And it is gonna be in our controller tag. So every time you create something, either in your local point IO or in your ethernet. If we open up our controller tags, we end up 
with something here that associated with it. And it is gonna be the name that you chose for that device. So I call this the trainer drive. And that's why it's so important. And we don't have drive one, two, three, four, five, unless they happen to be like on a conveyor that only has motor one, two, three, four, five, I guess then it may be okay. But try to make it descriptive. So local, we've talked about, that is what is physically at our PLC. Now we have trainer drive. And that is this. And even right now, without it running, let's open up our inputs and we can see we have some data in here. Are we looking for inputs or outputs? When it comes to inputs and outputs, it can get really confusing when you're talking about things that are communicating between each other because the drive will output something to a PLC input. The drive will read with an input, something from a drive output. So you have to think about where your perspective is. And this is Studio 5000, and we are looking at this Compact Logics PLC. So its perspective is here. And the same as this button and this light, it is gonna read inputs from either buttons or data off the drive. It is gonna write or command with outputs either to these lights or to tell this drive to move. So we want to go right now to our trainer drive outputs. And right there off the bat, we're going to see a start and a stop. Let's get gung-ho and let's enter a one there. And your drive probably sounds like mine. It's got an annoying fan that's blowing on this mic really bad. We hear a little bit of hum, but we're not moving. Also, Let's just put a zero into that start. And we notice we still have the hum and this annoying fan. Well, we're going to have to put a one in this stop bet. And you're going to hear that little click. The hum went away, and in a minute, our fan's going to turn off. And I'm going to go ahead and put a zero in that stop bet. So it is working. It is controlling the drive. But remember, we had configured a start source and a speed reference. And so where is that speed reference? Well, it's down here. Let's widen out this column a little bit. And right down here, drive trainer, O, frequency command. So this is how fast do you want it to go? Now the question is, what is its units? So is it zero to 100%? Well, let's guess. We can throw that in there. Let's just throw 100 in. And we're going to put a 1 in our start. Okay, we're slowly moving. And 100, you'll notice on your display, is 1 hertz. So in that case, we put 600 in. We're now at 6 hertz. And your motor base frequency on this drive is 60 hertz. So full speed is going to be 6,000 hertz. We got some speed control. We can hit some ones and zeros, but we would rarely be pecking at ones and zeros to control something. We're going to be using some type of logic. So let's go ahead and put a one in our stop bit. One, yeah, because this is important. Put a one in your stop bit, but don't put the zero in your start bit. And you'll notice it came to a stop. Now, if I just put a zero in my stop bit to clear it out, it doesn't start back up again. It's not gonna start back up until we go from a zero in that start back to a one in the start. But all right, let's stop all that again. So let's put some program in here so that we can actually use some buttons to make this work. Now, one thing I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but this trainer is still wired to the getting started guide that we initially started with. So buttons one through four are wired to input zero through three and lights one through four are wired to outputs zero through three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our main program and then go into our main routine. And we're only gonna concentrate on the start. Actually, there's a couple ways we could do this. Let's, let's hit a really basic way first. I don't think I would ever do it this way, but we noticed that we had to put a one into the start bit to make it start. And we had to put a one in the stop bit to make it stop. Well, we have buttons, so let's make it where, okay, go look for a one, go write a one. 
Go look for one, go write a one. So let's bring down an examine on of local colon one colon i dot data dot zero, which is our green button. And let's go ahead and label that as our green button. And then let's bring down an output energize and let's type in first whatever you named your drive in my case it is trainer drive colon o dot and then we want to type start so trainer drive output start also what's cool about if you have this named right as far as your drive is you probably don't need a description here now because i can understand that trainer drive start so now let's copy and paste this wrong. And we're going to use button number three, which is input number two. So change that to input two. And let's put a description on it of the red button. And then we're going to go to trainer drive colon zero stop. So let's put these two rungs in. And now we're going to press button one, which is our green button. Our motor starts, we're going to press the red button, and our motor stops. So there is probably the super simplest way to make the start-stop work. Now, honestly, I've never seen it done that way, and I can't think of an application where you would do it that way in particular. So here's what I would, we'll say, typically see. And yeah, let's use the rung from our seal-in lesson that we did. So let's arrange this like it. So let's go ahead and start edits on both these rungs and let's drag this red button up to the green button right beside of it. And then we need to change that instruction type, which I don't know if we've done this yet, but if you'll highlight the actual symbol, you can hit enter. And then either you can use this nice drop down here and find the XIO examine all like that. Or we could simply type it here. So it was at that, we can just hit backspace O and there we can change it that way. And now let's add a branch. And we're going to examine on the trainer drive start. Now, if you're wondering where we got this from, just go check out the seal in lesson we did. That's, this is the exact wrong out of it. But okay, so that takes care of starting it. So then when would we want to stop it? Well, we want to do that whenever it is not started. So I am going to come back down here and we're going to go look for a zero or examine all that trainer drive O start. So let's put that in. Now I'm going to press my green button and it starts. I'm going to press my red button. It stops. I can press my green button again. So that works exactly the same. Now what's the advantage of this is in the end, this gives me one point that I have to control to run this drive. And that's probably more of what you would typically see. So I think that's a good place to stop on this one. We've got a lot more videos there to go over, you know, what all we can do with this drive and read from this drive over ethernet. Big takeaway is pay attention to this IO light. It needs to be solid green. If it's not solid green, let's figure out why. So again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.